What's up guys? Team Fortress 2 on the PlayStation 3 is coming to an end. As of March 28, 2023, the servers for the PlayStation 3 version are set to shut down. With this shutdown means that TF2 is no longer accessible on the PlayStation 3. So as of the time of recording this video, till March 28th, this is your final time to actually go back and revisit this classic original experience of Team Fortress 2. The mods really made the orange box in both the 360 and PlayStation 3 version of the game really unique, and it really stood out. I remember playing this game back in like summer of 2008 and seeing people spawn like different assets from Half-Life 2 in the map and just being so blown away. Or I was hoping I'd find a lobby where someone would teleport me out of bounds on 2 Fort. These experiences really made this game so much more unique and made the entire experience so much more fun too. In today's video, I'll be teaching you how to mod TF2 on the PlayStation 3, what mods can do on the PlayStation 3, and showcasing some of them here on this video. Before we continue, I need to make this disclaimer, this is all for educational purposes only. You can easily exploit, ruin the experience for others using these mods. Like, like Spider-Man said, great power comes with great responsibility, and I know it's corny, but honestly, you could easily ruin the experience for everyone in the lobby, so my message to you is don't be a dick, use them appropriately, don't ruin the experience for others. As you noticed in this footage, I didn't go around and exploit those mods as an advantage. I played it normally, I built little forts and stuff for people to jump onto, and just had fun out of it. Just don't be a dick. So in order to mod Team Fortress 2 in 2023, it's actually quite easy, but you'll need the following three things. A USB stick, a PS3 console, and a Windows computer. Let's get started with the file we need the mod first. First off, turn on your PlayStation 3, plug in a USB stick, and go to the Game tab. From there, go to Save Data Utility. Inside the save data utility, you'll find a, a file that says Team, Team Fortress 2. Hit triangle, then copy. Now select the USB stick. Once that's completed, we've got all the files we need to start the modding process. Now we eject the USB stick from the PlayStation 3 and we plug that to your computer. From here, we first want to download a program called Brute CRC32. Once to download this one program first, and once that's downloaded, we want to locate your USB stick in the file directory in Windows. From here, we want to use the following directory. Once you go for this directory, you'll see a .cfg file. Copy that file. Before you do anything else after copying this file, I recommend backing it up as it's very easy and mess up these scripts. So how I back this up is, I go on my desktop and I create a folder and I just called it TF2 for this case. And inside the TF2 folder, you want to create another folder called modded. Now inside the TF2 folder, you want to copy the CFG file we pull from the USB stick. And we also want to copy that same file into the modded folder. Now the idea here is that we keep the modded one and the other one separate from each other so that the one in the root directory of the TF2 folder is clean and the modded one stays modded. This way we can revert it if we ever have to get a corrupted file, for example. Now that the file has been backed up, we can now go back to the program we downloaded earlier in the video. Once that's downloaded, you want to extract brute CRC to your desktop, and inside the file you'll find executable, make sure you launch that as well. Once you launch the executable, you'll be presented with about three little windows there. You first want to hit the select window. Once that's selected, you then want to go to your file directory where you saved the modded file. In this case, where we made the backup, we're going to select the modded file. Awesome. Once that's selected, you then want to hit examine and you'll see onto your far right that you'll see a hexacode that'll pop up. Make sure and note that as we'll need that for later on in the video. Now, while the program is running, we want to open up the CFG file. You can use the following programs. You can use Notepad, Notepad++, or if you have an IDE installer on your computer, that works too. For this case of the tutorial, i am be using Microsoft Visual Studio Code but you can use Notepad++ or any other uh, text editor. It should work fine too. Once the CFG file is open, you'll see some scripts and buttons assignment. This is the basis of modding on TF2 on the PlayStation 3. I believe by default, uh, TF2 on the PS3 actually has SV underscore cheats enabled. All we're doing is assigning cheats to each button. And we can use multiple commands as you can see here. From here, you can easily drag and drop the scripts on the website into your text editor of choice. I personally did this and then I added my own custom scripts. If you guys would like, inside the description, my code will be there. All you have to do is basically the same thing as TF2 Modding Dojo, just copy and paste it into the text editor and you're all set. 
Once that's copy over, make sure you save the file, but keep the program running and go back to brute CRC32. Now, remember that hex code I mentioned earlier in the video? Copy that over to the window down to your uh, left bottom that shows there and click do it. Once that happens, it will freeze for, for five to 10 seconds. It'll have a prompt asking you to make the change. Make sure you set, hit yes, and then it'll say successfully completed or bytes achieved or whatever it says there. Awesome. So once that's done, all we have to do is go back to the modded file that we just created and copy that over to the USB stick that we had used for the PlayStation 3. Once that's copied over, we go back to our PlayStation 3. Now on the PS3, all we have to do is go back to the, sa uh, the game save data utility and then select our USB stick. From there, copy the TF2 file over to the PlayStation 3 and overwrite the existing one and you're set. What kind of mods can you do in Team Fortress 2? Well, let's start with spawning objects. So as mentioned before from the TF2 Dojo website, they have a list of objects you can spawn in the game. One of the objects I started with was a wood wall. From here, I would spawn it on the ground and I would spawn multiple ones. And I noticed that it's a little finicky on how you actually spawn them. So depending on where your reticles are, that's the position of the wall, where the wall is gonna be positioned at. Now, you do have the ability to rotate the object, but you can only rotate it mostly in one, one direction. You can't really change the actual formation of the object to my knowledge. So what I ended up doing was basically spawning an object on the ground, rotating it, and I actually ended up making a fort out of it, which I thought was pretty cool. The ability to use the remove command to remove objects on the map and even objectives. Just be careful not to select another player as it will break the server. And I did this a few times by accident and uh, I, I did definitely ruin some games doing this. You can also change the color of textures on the map too. For example, if you were to select a wall or any object in there, you can change it from a variety of colors. For this example, I used like green and blue and I thought they looked kind of cool. Of course, you have things like no clipping, god mode, or an option too. And one really cool option is the ability to teleport players to different parts of the map. Now, especially in 2 Fort where there's a lot of spots in the map that you can see behind fences, you can actually teleport, teleport other players there and they can explore parts of the map they never could ever see could ever go to before, which I thought was pretty cool. One of the things that really impressed me, however, out of all these things was how other players reacted when I modded in game. I would build a fort on an empty server and over time, other players would join in on that said server and they could have easily gr grifted me, but they didn't. Even with the opposite red and blue team next to each other, no one shot at each other. It was almost like when they saw mods or like a fort or whatever, they were so curious and so out of the ordinary that they normally see that they just kind of stopped all together. I thought that was really neat. Now, mods, generally speaking, are always met with a lot of negativity. Most of the time, it's well-deserved. Listen, no one likes a wall hacker or someone using an aimbot in a match, especially when you're playing games like Escape from Tarkov. It ruins the entire immersion and the whole purpose of playing that game. However, when you mod that enhances or changes the core experience to all the players, while not at the expense or the advantage of the player, the whole perspective of modding can really change. And this is one of the reasons why I made this video in the first place. Team Fortress 2 modding on the PlayStation 3 is a lot of fun and easy to do, and I'm going to be I'm going to miss exploring this with other players. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below if this is the style of content you like to see on this channel, and share any fond memories you have of Team Fortress 2 on the PlayStation 3. And I do want to thank everyone for their support so far. I mean, I started this channel three weeks ago, and I've already have but 35 subscribers. That's a, to me, that's a big deal. Anyways, I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys. Until next time, see you guys later. Peace.